let's move to what's going on with earnings here. Um, big companies like uh, IBM reported. IBM reported after the close of trading, revenue missing analyst estimates. You know, it seemed like IBM was sort of getting its mojo back a little bit. And then once again, this quarter kind of throws that into question. Um, it is trying to, well, it is spinning off its computer services unit. It is trying to pivot more toward cloud. But that uh, unit, the cloud unit, did not necessarily perform this quarter. The shares are down 6% sus. Yeah, uh, I encourage any viewer watching this right now, uh, YouTube, Fios, Channel 604, whatever it might be, just take a screen grab on my face right now, thinking about IBM. I mean, that was the type <laughs> of quarter here. In the, it, what the, in the golden that? age, yeah, it, that's just my face. Screen grab it, and that's my analysis on IBM here. In the golden age of cloud services, software services, an entire, I would say, world still very much captive and working from their home and needing large amounts of computing, power, software, you name it. I mean, this company, just put up an absolute stinker of a quarter here, uh, really stinker of a quarter. And because of that stinker of a quarter, you're now going to see IBM shares yielding close to 5%. That is the dividend yield. I mean, you can keep that dividend yield. Look at some of these results in here. Uh, the cloud and cognitive software segment, revenues only up 2.5%, power system sales down 24% or 25%, excluding currency inflation. And you hop on the earnings call and you get the no sense of, of really that operating margins for this company will improve to any substantial degree over the next 12 months. In fact, they might continue to go down. At least that is the moon on the street among those that I've talked to uh, this morning as the company invests in talent. And you also get the sense that they are being distracted. Management is being distracted by the upcoming spinoff at Kindrel. Now, this was uh, pitched to investors as key to the uh, a key to IBM unlocking a lot more margin potential, and at least for now, it's just not happening. So really, terrible quarter. The turnaround in IBM completely, uh, it looks to have stalled, and I think they have to get back out there and now just try to reassure Wall Street that, that they could, in fact, turn this company around without taking more drastic cost-cutting efforts. Yeah, I mean, in the same vein, Moth and Nathan sent out with a note after the earnings release saying that they expect IBM to remain a chronic underperformer in 2021 with weakening free cash flow. And that's despite the optimism, as you point out, Brian, over whether or not uh, allowing Kindrel to spin off would actually be a positive catalyst for uh, flat free cash flow growth. So I think that does remain an open story. I do want to point out that, yes, while the numbers for this quarter weren't great, especially on their business line with their infrastructure and their tech support services, one of the points of optimism was really that Red Hat acquisition that they had a few years ago. Uh, apparently, they hope that that is going to be a bright spot going forward with their open hybrid cloud tech. Apparently, that business was up by 17%. So if you wanted to find one silver lining in an otherwise a disappointing report, maybe that's the one. But if you compare that with cloud revenue growth at other companies, it's still, you know, it's, it's just not, it's just not. Brian's got to do his face again, yeah. I, I'm kind of scared of that face. All right, let's <laughs> let's talk about HP. What face would what face would describe HP here this morning, Brian? Uh, the company coming out with a 2022 uh, fiscal forecast that is above what analysts have been anticipating. The shares are up by five percent, and the company says in 2022 it's going to re return at least 100 percent. I don't know how you would do more than 100%. It's going to return at least 100% of its free cash flow through dividends and share repurchases. So uh, folks are getting their money back from this company. Also, the CFO, Marie Meyer, said long-term revenue growth will be in the low single-digit percentage. That's a little better than what analysts were looking for. They've been lo they were looking for declines for this company. So, Saz, what's your take on this one? Well, my face here is really all smiles, Julie. All smiles for HP's uh, Investor Day and uh, really hat tip to CEO Enrique Lores, friend of the show. Clearly still getting it done here on a, new, on a couple things. One, they reiterated third quarter guidance. Over the past few months, we've seen a couple downgrades on the, by the street on HP, concern about the trajectory of their PC business. That guidance reiteration, I think, is very confidence inspiring. Number two is that 2022 outlook. Uh, the street, uh, at least according to the estimates that I saw, looking for about 386 per share. Uh, HP is telling you or telling investors that they might be 407 to 427 on a non-GAAP basis here. So that reflects probably a lot of confidence that they can continue to drive a lot of efficiency in their business as they have proven that they can continue to do. Uh, they're out there buying back a lot of stock and that the PC business is not going to fall off a cliff. And then really, Julian Bryan, again, all smiles here for HP. Not so much 
describe you? All smiles as well. If you are wearing your plastic shoes today, Crocs uh, coming out with numbers that are just astonishing. Is that a word for it? Even though Brian Chung did not get the Hidden Valley Ranch branded Crocs that he entered a drawing for, I can't even wrap my head around that. Um, Brian Chung, uh, th this company's uh, performance is impressive. I mean, I'm gutted. I hope that they use some of the margin that they had in this quarter to produce more Hidden Valley uh, collaboration Crocs. That way I can actually get a pair and put it on the flex shelf. But their quarter three revenue is up 73% to $626 million. And they guided on a 20% plus revenue growth in the full year 2022. That explains why shares of Crocs are up about 10% right now on this Thursday morning. And again, a lot of this is just kind of strategic positioning from a cultural standpoint. They have these collaborations with the likes of Balenciaga, a high-end brand, in addition to uh, random collaborations seemingly, like Hidden Valley Ranch, where they have those gibbets. Again, those are these those small little things you can put into the holes on the tops of the Crocs that have little Hidden Valley Ranch bottles on there. I mean, they are fully aware of what their brand is. It's ironic in many cases, and they're capitalizing off of that. And what's interesting is supply chain issues are also an issue with uh, Crocs, although they said that they're actually repositioning and moving pretty nimbly from their factories in Vietnam, which have been disrupted by the supply chain and the virus to uh, places like China, Indonesia, and Bosnia. So they're showing that from a management standpoint, they're just as flexible as maybe the shoes themselves as well. <laughs> maybe IBM should buy Crocs, boost their growth up, guys. <laughs> Why not? Uh, before we go, why not? Why not? A little collab, a little IBM branded croc. There you go. Um, before we go to break, just want to get a check on Tesla as well, because we talked about that a bunch at the top of the show. And we are also going to be talking about it next with an analyst. Those shares have turned around. Now they're up by 1%. So much for that 50% gain that it has seen from the lows, preventing further gains today. That's not the case anymore.